Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. If you saw my last video, which is right there, I talked about the new stuff in Lightroom version 11, where they've added this AI masking capability that automatically selects subjects and skies, which is awesome. Um, you know, I'm sitting here saying how fired up I am about Lightroom, which I don't really say on this channel. And um, what I wanted to do is kind of show how I can use that in combination with my favorite app, which is Luminar AI and use those together to really get the best benefits, if you will, or the benefits or the best of each app to work together. So I've got a photo here, and this is one I've already cropped, but what I wanna do is go ahead and just initially start by sending it over to Luminar. So I am here in Lightroom. I'm gonna say File, and I'm gonna say Export with Preset, and uh, edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments. I did crop it. Other than that, I've done nothing else. And by the way, this is a JPEG. I'm just using as an example. But we'll give that a second. It will open up in Luminar and I will full screen it and I'm gonna click on edit. And what I wanna do, one of the great, great things, one of the most popular features probably of Luminar is sky replacement. And I'm gonna do that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say sky selection. I'm gonna come down here and grab this guy, which is one of my own and drop that into the photo. And boom, there it is. I mean, as you know, um, Luminar does a great job. Now there's a section right there that's been missed. So I'm gonna click on mask refinement. I'm gonna pull global down a little bit. I'm gonna pull close gaps. Okay, and a little swizzling. I also drop this sky uh, vertically a little bit and I'm happy with that. I like that quite a bit. Now, one thing to point out is there is scenery lighting, which I like to do a little bit. I don't wanna do too much. I'm gonna do just a little bit to give it a little bit more of that warmth. And also note that there are some sky adjustments, but I'm not gonna use those. Um, I'm happy with the sky right now, but what I wanna do is actually just click apply, send this back to Lightroom, and then take advantage of that new masking to do some specific targeted edits. Okay, so here I am back in Lightroom. There's my photo. That's what the photo was. Of course, this is all post crop. So there's my photo with the new sky, which is fantastic. And of course, I wanna take advantage of these new masking capabilities and tools here in Lightroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Select Sky, and it figures it out really quickly and really well. I love that. I mean, it's just, this is like a game changer. I'm just excited that Adobe has innovated like this because this really causes, I think, the other folks products uh, that I like to use, Luminar, On One, things like that, to really have to make sure that they're on top of their game, so to speak. So I'm gonna come over here and play with the exposure a little bit, uh, maybe lift that a tiny bit. I'm just kinda, I don't really have a plan, to be honest. I'm kinda editing by feel. I'm gonna add a little bit of clarity. When I add clarity to skies, I like how it, you know, you can see how it kinda adds a little bit of drama to the texture in the clouds, which I kinda like. And speaking of texture, I'm gonna go a little bit left um, which helps to kind of smooth that out. I like smoother skies, but a little bit of that clarity also creates a little bit of that kind of crunch. So I'm getting a little bit of a, the best of both, if you will. Regardless, I've just added a little bit to the sky. I might add a little bit of saturation. I kind of like that. Um, and I might actually add a little bit of tint. So there it is. And what I want to do now is, again, take advantage of this amazing tool to edit the foreground. So just as I did in that last video, I'm gonna create a new mask and go ahead and select sky. And it does it automatically, but this time I'm gonna come in here and click invert. And so now I've isolated almost perfectly the foreground, which is all the natural elements that are non-sky, right? So the, the, the ground itself, as well as these hoodoos or whatever you call them, this was shot out in New Mexico. Um, outside of Santa Fe, outside of a town called Abiquiu. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna come in here and I wanna warm up that foreground a little bit. I'm gonna maybe increase the brightness a tiny bit, maybe a little bit of contrast. And I definitely wanna go get some clarity, which is right there. I like clarity quite a bit in Lightroom. It's one of the things that um, I think has been um, probably one of the more popular tools for me uh, back when I've used um, a Lightroom a lot, which I haven't in the last couple of years, to be honest, um, as you may know from previous videos, but I'm kind of excited about it again because of all these great tools um, for selecting skies and uh, subjects. So anyway, there's some foreground edits and I like that, but I'm not really done. There's a couple of other things I wanna do. Um, I've isolated that whole area in the foreground. However, there's still a, a little bit of an imbalance to me in the light. The hoodoos themselves are a little bit dark and the foreground's a little bit bright. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get another mask. And this is where I'm gonna use kind of your traditional stuff in Lightroom, which in this case is a radial mask. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag that and put it in over here. So something about like that, 
maybe pull it down a little bit. And all I want to do is just lift that exposure a tiny bit, just like that, just, in, just enough that you can see it a little bit better. And then I'm going to add one more radial gradient, and I'm going to put that one over here. Same kind of idea. So something about like that maybe. Um, let me pull it out a little further there. Maybe scoot it over a tiny bit. Same basic idea, and that is just a little bit of lift in the exposure. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want the foreground to be too bright because the sun is obviously out of frame and you're not expecting any direct light on these. So I want to kind of keep that in balance. I think that's in balance. I mean, you know, I might need to drop that a tiny bit and I might go back to this other one and drop that a tiny bit as well. And so that's one of the nice things about these massive courses. You can just click through and use any of them uh, again, right? Go back and uh, basically re-edit that mask. So now I think I'm done. I mean, I've got all my basic edits done for the sky and the foreground. Actually, that's not entirely true. I'm gonna go back to the foreground. So that's this one. And I wanna give it a little bit more warmth. I gave it like a four. I'm gonna give it like a six and I'm gonna add a little bit of tint because there is a little bit of pink in that sky. And I want a little bit of that feeling uh, kind of in the dirt as well. So now I've got that, and I really just want to wrap it up with a, a slight vignette. So something about like that, nothing major, just something kind of minor, but I just wanted to add a little bit of a vignette. And if you look at the previous photo, which is there, a little bit too dark in the foreground, gray skies, kind of boring, nothing wrong with gray skies. In fact, I like them quite a bit, but when I'm replacing a sky, I generally want to put in a sunset and change the mood and just kind of reinvent the photo. And I'm able to do that, taking advantage of the power of Luminar AI with their automatic sky replacement, which I think is the best out there. Couple that with the ability to isolate the sky and the foreground separately and almost immediately with these new masks in Lightroom, it gives me a lot of power and control over the scene to really create something that I wanted to create, which is this. And so that's how I'm using Luminar AI, take advantage of at least one of the cool features in Luminar, and there's plenty more, and uh, coupling that with these powerful masking capabilities in Lightroom. Now, having said all that and shown that, Luminar Neo is gonna be different and interesting, and I think we're gonna have a lot of similar mask control in Neo that we have now in Lightroom. I'm kind of excited, frankly, that Lightroom came out with this, and I'm, I'm sure that these Skyloom people, because they use Lightroom and they do comparisons and they gotta make sure it works as plugins and all that, I'm sure that they're playing with this feature as well. So my assumption is that we're gonna see some really cool stuff, and that's what I'm expecting with some of the masking tools in Neo. So things may change once that new product is out, but in the meantime, with Luminar AI, coupling that with Lightroom, you really get the best of both worlds, and it's a powerful, powerful combo that I'm having a lot of fun with. That's a sample workflow of using the best capabilities of both to come up with an image that uh, you know basically I imagined because that sunset was shot in Wyoming, and uh, this photo, uh, the foreground, was shot in New Mexico. That's half the fun. In fact, that's a large part of the fun of photo editing for me is creating something that I want to create. I'm not a photojournalist. You know that if you've been here before, but that's a sample workflow for you. Just wanted to walk through that and once again, just kind of compliment Adobe on doing a great job with these masks. I love it. I'm excited. I'm having a lot of fun. Hope it gives you some ideas, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you really soon. Take care of yourselves and until then, adios.